heights, Warwick Isaacs again from the Canterbury Earthquake Recovery Authority. Now that bus tours are well underway, we've got a window of opportunity to, um, to get people into Cathedral Square via walking um, out of Cashel Mall and the restart program behind us and uh, go up through Colombo Street and, and into Cathedral Square. We've got a window of opportunity simply because we've got a wee break in the demolition um, program at the moment and I'll point out the buildings as we go through um, and walk up Colombo into the square. Just what buildings will, will um, proceed after, after the three or four week walking tour that we're able to do now. So we're starting uh, this weekend on Saturday at nine o'clock in the morning. There'll be 11 hours of opportunity for people to come through. Our plan at, at the moment is to allow 300 people in, into um, Cathedral Square at any one time and on the hour, every hour for 11 hours from 9 o'clock in the morning, you'll be able to go in and we'll have uh, four or five CERA staff in there just pointing out hazards, making sure that you're comfortable being in there, making sure that your safety um, is being looked after as of course that's our, our number one issue is making sure you're safe in there. As we get underway there's just a couple of other things you'll need to know is, is when you come on the walking tour you don't need high vis and helmet like I've got on now. Uh, the CERA staff in here will have high vis on so you'll be able to readily identify them but it is safe enough um, and we've fenced the area off so you don't need to wear that equipment. All you do though uh, need to make sure you've got good solid footwear on that's not a place for jandals and sandals. Um, you'll trip over things and get hurt if you do that. The other thing to just be mindful of is that uh, we've got 11 slots, per, 11 hours per day, take over three, uh, 300 per hour. So we've got plenty of room for people to um, come down. So please don't rush us. We, we really can't cope with thousands all at one time. Just come down. Pick your opportunity, pick your weekend because there's going to be plenty of opportunity for you to get through. So as we're coming down now, the Triangle Centre, we're just going past here now, that's um, on the right hand side of the street as we're coming up Colombo. Interestingly that building there, it looks pretty good from the outside. The owner's informed us that he's got between five and seven million dollars to spend on that building to, um, to make it good uh, for reopening. And so that's a lot of money and that's just indicative of, of all the buildings that are remaining in town. There are very few that can just open up uh, without the owners spending quite a bit of uh, their money and insurance money on getting the buildings uh, back to fully operational use again. So on our, on our left here, there's two buildings are now gone and that's the back of the, the Cashel Mall restart there. Adjacent to these vacant sites is the McDonald's and, and time zone buildings. Those are both make safe, uh, they've got some repair work to do but the buildings aren't being demolished. On, on my right here, the Milano building, that, uh, that is part of the Triangle Centre again. That building is um, an owner initiated job with, a, with his insurer, the decisions made to demolish that building. And unfortunately along with it, the, the KFC building here as well. Quite clearly you can see that the broken glass and things in the building, that's an uneconomic repair. That's, that, that building goes right around the corner uh, and that will commence demolition sometime early in the new year. Next to time zone you'll see that the, the roof's gone out of time zone, uh, but again that's a make safe and, and will remain. We have got a number of these little slots where buildings were in the past and, and they just show, show the size of the buildings, buildings we probably didn't take too much notice of in the past. Burger King building here on my left, that, is, um, that building will remain, has some damage quite clearly, but uh, it, it's good to stay up and, and be repaired and, and rebuilt in the future. Unfortunately that's not the same with the 24 hour Delhi takeaway building here, as you can see that. It looks quite damaged, it is quite badly damaged. That building we're expecting will be gone within uh, two to three weeks from now. So we have, as we move now up to the, the Hereford Colombo Street intersection, as I look to the left, um, as I've mentioned 
last time on the bus tours. Um, the white building just along Hereford Street, that is slated for demolition. The good news is the Ibis Hotel, uh, also on Hereford Street, and the Telecom Exchange, those, those are both staying there. They're working furiously on it now, you can see the workers up there, and the Ibis Hotel is hoping to be open by the middle of next year, which is really good news to get some hotel uh, accommodation back in the centre of the city. On my left again, the AMZ building. Uh, we're, we're not aware of anything with that building. Uh, it's with the owner and the insurer again to, to work out what the future of that building is. Unfortunately, on the opposite side, the BNZ building uh, is a dangerous building. And this is one of the buildings that, once the demolition commences of, of, of this building here, then we're not going to be able to continue with, with access uh, for walking into the Cathedral Square. It's obviously a large building and at the moment they're working on getting tenant uh, retrieval, so getting tenants' possessions out as much as possible and then the demolition will start uh, in earnest in the new year. So as you can see we've entered a, an area now that's fenced and that, that's simply to keep you safe, it keeps you in the area, that's a controlled access point into Cathedral Square. Um, we're trying to make it as un un unobtrusive as possible, um, but you'll just need to walk through this uh, fencing and up into the square. We're just entering the Cathedral Square now. To the right, I uh, have the Millennium Hotel and the Heritage behind it and the Heritage Apartments. Those three buildings have stood up remarkably well in the earthquakes. It'll be some months, potentially um, around a year, before they will reopen again. There's a lot of work there to be done, but the owners of, of the buildings are still working with the insurer on that. You would have seen a lot of activity around me as, as, as we're walking up here today. It is a busy place with, with workers, uh, whether they're telecom workers or um, chorus workers, demolition crews, construction crews, a lot of activity going on. That, that won't be the same on the weekend, which is why we're coming through then. It will be a little quieter, people will still be working, uh, but less activity. You see the chalice here, the chalice has, has stood up very well. you notice it's fenced off, that's not because of damage to the chalice, it's simply that we want to protect the chalice from um, vehicles that are moving in and out of the square. The cathedral is obviously right here. Um, the idea we'll have is that you'll be able to go into the area in front of the cathedral and just view that and turn around the square and look at the buildings and um, just appreciate what, what's happening and what is going to happen in here. Okay, so you notice in the square now there's some temporary buildings there. They're um, our demolition headquarters. We're re relocating that from Churum, Manchester, corner and they're coming in here <coughs> We're wanting to bring the cordons in uh, as soon as we can so that's part of planning for that. So as we head further into the square now we'll be looking around you we'll see the Grant Thornton building there uh, that's the tall building uh, in the distance. We're still assessing that building um, and, and its future will be determined in, in a reasonably short period of time. So the old, the old post office here, that, that's remaining in the square. Behind again, that's a rear view of the, um, the telephone exchange. To the left there, of course, is the Clarendon Towers building. The tenders have closed on that, and we're just working through the tenders at the moment with clarifying issues such as price and methodology for bringing the building down. Quite clearly now the cathedral's uh, very visible, the, the damage to the tower and the western wall and uh, the damage to the rose window is, is clearly obvious. So this is the area here where, where you'll end up inside the square. There'll be a bit of fencing around um, just to keep you in a, a nice safe area. What you'll notice is there is some, some uh, empty space, empty land now. And over on the northern side, there's a number of buildings that come down. 
the MFL building there where the demolition crew is working over there now. Behind the camera lot there, that's uh, Mum's 24-hour restaurant. It's another building. And of course, the PwC in the background. So whilst those buildings have got to come down, there's a lot of work to go yet. What, would, what we um, hope is that you've enjoyed being able to access the square. It is a sombering experience. You'll find that, that um, it may knock you back a little bit. But we certainly need to get this work behind us. We've got a, a grand opportunity now for a, to create a very vibrant, um, beautiful new heart of the city, and, and that's what we are all looking forward to now.